In this video, I'm going to go through what's called the Kuntucker method, uh, which is a method um, to deal with more than one constraint uh, and basically do the Lagrange multiplier method with more than one constraint and also allow your constraints to not be strictly equal. They can be less than or equal to uh, or greater than or equal to a certain value. Okay, so let's go through what I mean by this. So let's say we have the following. We have a function f of x and y, possibly z, that we want to maximize or minimize. And let's say we have two constraints. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then what we do is the following. We set up our Lagrange like the following, we take our function, let's say of x, y, z, we add constraint 1 times it by lambda 1, add constraint 2 times it by lambda 2, um, and then um, do all the same steps as with the uh, Lagrange multiplier method with one um, difference here in that we're going to first assume that constraint 2 is just satisfied here. I'll talk about what that means in a minute. Uh, and what we do for that then we set lambda 2 equal to 0, uh, and then solve the remaining Lagrange problem. And then um, after we're done, um, test if constraint 2 is indeed satisfied. And then um, if it's not satisfied, then we're going to go on to step 2. I'm going to define what step two is a minute is in a minute. Uh, if it is satisfied, then stop here. And we have a solution. I'm going to go through an example in a minute of this too. Step two. You go on to step two only if what solution you found in step one did not satisfy constraint two. So if you had the case where your constraint 2 is not satisfied, and again, we'll see what that means in a minute with an actual example. If we have the case where constraint 2 is not satisfied, then we move on to step 2, which is the following. Assume constraint 1 is satisfied. So we actually set lambda 1 equal to 0 and solve the leftover Lagrange problem. And then once we're done, test if constraint 1 is satisfied. Okay. Uh, if yes, then we stop here. Whatever we found is our solution. If no, go to step number three. And step three is the following. Um, <clears throat> solve when both constraints are what we call binding. Okay, so that's how to do the Kuntucker method, but I haven't actually done an example yet. Um, so let's do one basic example here. Example. Okay. Let 
let's say we have the following. Let u be our utility function, which is just x, y. Uh, and we have a budget constraint um, that's x plus y is less than or equal to 50. So we can spend, let's say, at most $50 or 50 uh, units of dollars. Uh, and 2x plus y is less than or equal to 60, meaning it costs us, um, and let's call this our coupon constraint. So let's say we have to redeem two coupons um, to buy product X and one coupon to buy product Y, and we have 60 coupons total. A uh, good example of something like this is wartime rationing. Where you're given coupons, and let's say this is your butter and this is your bread. And um, Cost you two coupons to buy butter, one to buy bread, and you have 60 coupons total and $50 total, something like that. And your utility is your happiness, let's say, or something like that. Um, okay. Uh, so if we want to go do what's called the Kun Tucker method, uh, first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to set up our Lagrange function here, which is x, y um, plus lambda 1 times 50 minus x minus y plus lambda 2 times 60 minus 2x minus y. I have ignored the inequality symbols so far. I'm going to talk about those in a minute. I also didn't mention we want to maximize the utility. Okay. And note again for now, these two inequality symbols we basically assume or let them be equals symbols for now, and we go test for that later. Um, when we set up our um, Lagrange equation, okay. Um, so basically we just do this first. We say let's let x plus y equal to 50. That gives us 50 minus x minus y equals zero. And then let's let, um, 2x plus y equal to 60. That gives us um, 0 equals to 60 minus 2x minus y, for example. Uh, and then we plug both of those uh, constraints in um, to our Lagrange function. Now, um, step one, we assume lambda 2 equals to 0. What that actually means is that constraint number two is not binding. And what that means is that um, we don't actually, we're assuming that we're not actually going to run out of coupons. We're assuming that money is going to be the issue and not coupons. We'll have plenty of coupons, so don't worry about those. We're going to ignore constraint number two, and we're just going to go solve this problem, assuming that money is our key issue. Okay, um, so what happens here then is we let lambda two equal to zero, so our Lagrange just turns into this. Okay, and then we just go do our Lagrange problem as we normally would. Lx will be y plus lambda 1 times 0 minus 1 minus 0, which becomes y minus lambda. Uh, Ly becomes uh, x plus lambda 1 times 0 minus 0 minus 1, which gives us x minus lambda. L lambda 1 is going to be 50 minus x minus y. Set everything equal to 0 as before. And y equals to lambda, x equals to lambda. And um, that gives us then that if y equals to lambda and x equals to lambda, then x equals to y. Uh, and we can substitute that in. And we get 50 minus 2y is 0. Uh, when we substitute y for x there, and we get that 
y must be 25. And since x also equals to y, then x is also 25. Um, so this just kind of boils down to a basic Lagrange uh, problem. Now, um, <clears throat> what we need to do, though, which is different than our usual Lagrange problem, is we now need to go and test constraint number two. And what is constraint number two? Constraint number two was where we said that we couldn't spend more than 60 coupons, where it costs us two coupons to buy product X and one coupon to buy product Y. Well, let's see if that works. So if we're buying 25 units of product X, 25 units of product Y, that turns out to be 75 coupons that we would need. So our assumption was false. Uh, we wouldn't have enough coupons in this case. We would have to use 75 coupons to buy 25 units of both product X and Y. So what we do if we do not satisfy constraint number two when we check it, what we do is we go back and step number two, we go and let lambda one equal to zero, i.e. assume constraint number one is non-binding. What that means is that um, looking at your constraint, going all the way back here, so constraint number one um, was our budget constraint. What that means is that we're assuming that we're not going to run out of money. We're going to run out of coupons first before we run out of money now. So we're going to assume that we're never going to hit the $50 we're going to be under the $50 that we're allowed. Instead, we're going to worry about running out of coupons. Um, so what that's going to boil down to then, our Lagrange function, when we set lambda 1 equal to 0, our Lagrange turns into xy plus lambda 2 times by 60 minus 2x minus y. And then this just boils down to a basic Lagrange problem. Uh, derivative with respect to x will be y minus 2 lambda 2, and then derivative with respect to y will be x minus lambda 2, and then 60 minus 2x minus y. Set everything equal to 0, all of the derivatives. And y equals to 2 lambda 2. Um, y over 2 will equal to lambda 2 then. x equals to lambda 2 uh, from the second equation, so that gives us that x equals to y over 2, because um, both of those expressions are equal to lambda 2. And then we get 60 minus 2 times y over 2 minus y equals to 0. And that gives us 60 minus y minus y. And that gives us 60 equals to 2y. So 30 is equal to y. And then x is going to be equal to y over 2, so 30 over 2, which is 15. Okay, so basically what we're doing with Kuntucker, we're actually doing several Lagrange problems possibly, and we're checking at each step if what we assume to be true is actually true. So now we need to check constraint number one. We assumed we were not going to run out of money, that we'd have plenty of money. We assumed that x plus y was less than equal to 50, i.e. we spent less than $50 on product x and y. Um, so let's check now. We uh, buy 15 units of product X, 30 of product Y. That turns out to be $45 we use. Note we're really actually assuming it costs us $1 to buy each item. That's really 1X and 1Y. One okay. <clears throat> and um, that turns out we would spend $45, which is indeed 
less than 50. So we have indeed satisfied constraint number one, really using less than the $50 allowed. So we stop here and our solution is the following. X equals to 15, Y equals to 30, which would give us a utility of X times Y at 15 times 30, which is 450. So that is a basic Kun Tucker example. Uh, again, just to recap, what we do is we actually just um, rerun the Lagrange several times, um, assuming um, different constraints are what we call binding. So assuming, um, first of all, that we don't have enough money in step one, but we have enough coupons. Step two, we assumed that we had enough um, money, but not enough coupons. Uh, and if we had to, we would move on to a step number three, um, where we have to satisfy both. That will be the next example.